In this presentation, we are going to discuss the composition, structure, and nutritional value of meat, fish, and poultry. To get us started, we need to have a, a better understanding of what meat is and where it comes from. So meat, for our definition purposes, is the flesh of animals used for food. That can include beef, uh, which is a full-grown cow or, or bovine, veal, which is meat from an immature cow, ranging anywhere from three weeks old to 14 weeks old. So it's really a, a baby cow or a calf. Lamb is a young sheep, no more than 14 months old, whereas mutton is the meat from a mature sheep. Pork comes from pigs that are usually no more than a year old However, higher quality pork is obtained from pigs between six and seven months. We are going to highlight five structural components of meat. First, we have the muscle. How the muscles are put together affect the quality and cooking characteristics of the cut of meat. Muscles that are used less by the animal will be more tender cuts of meat such as the sirloin, the rib, or the T-bone. On the other hand, muscles that are exercised more often, such as those in the legs or in the belly, will produce less tender cuts of meat, such as round steaks, chuck roast, brisket. The second structural component is the connective tissue. The connective tissue combines the muscle cells together. Collagen-containing connective tissue is white, whereas elastin-connective tissue is yellow in color. Less tender cuts of meat usually contain more connective tissue than the tender cuts of meat. The third structural component is the fatty tissue. The intramuscular fat is also called marbling. And you can see that as the flex of fat found throughout the lean muscle tissue. Most often, the more marbling a meat cut has, the more tender it will be. The intermuscular fat is the fat found between the muscles. Fourth component is the bone. Uh, bones are found in meat sold. Um, some products contain the bone, some products don't. And then lastly are the pigments. The color of meat comes mainly from the pigment called myoglobin. Different meats have different amounts of myoglobin, thus affecting the color. For example, pork is going to be less red in color because it contains less myoglobin than beef. Myoglobin is also affected by the presence of oxygen, exposure to air, changes in pH, packaging, freezing, fat content, and other added ingredients. When looking at the nutritional composition of beef, you will see that it is mostly water. 75% of, of the lean muscle in beef is water. So this explains the challenge of shrinkage, of the meat shrinkage when we, cook, when we cook the meat. Excessive moisture loss during cooking will lead to dry meat, a less of a product weight, and ultimately less of a product profit. The protein content in the muscle tissue becomes firmer and loses moisture as it coagulates. Doneness is related to the desired degree of muscle protein coagulation. Excessive coagulation results in a toughening of the proteins and an increased moisture loss. Animal protein is a complete protein, meaning that it contains all of the essential amino acids. When looking at the fat, remember the fat can be deposited throughout the tissue, so that's the marbling. Um, also, it can be found inter, intermuscularly, so between the muscles. Surface fat um, can help to retain the moisture during cooking. A certain amount of fat is 
desirable for the perception of juiciness, tenderness, and flavor of the meat product. Meat, um, especially beef, is a poor source of carbohydrate. There is just enough carbohydrate in animal products to give a browning um, through the Maillard reaction, but again, very small amount of the macronutrient carbohydrate. You can see there in terms of vitamins and minerals, beef is a good source of the B vitamins, thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin. Um, and it's also a very good source of iron, zinc, selenium, and phosphorus. So which would you choose? Uh, ground beef has varying levels of fat. Federal law states that ground beef can never be less than 70% lean. On the left, you can see there, the product is 80% lean, 20% fat. And on the right, we've got 90% lean, 10% fat. The price is there on the bottom, the yield loss is on the bottom. You can clearly see the nutrition facts. So which one of these two would you purchase and why? Poultry is another type of high quality or complete protein. Poultry encompasses all domesticated birds that are intended for human consumption, including chicken, turkey, duck, geese, and domestic game birds such as swab, which is a young pigeon, and pheasants. When looking at the nutritional composition of poultry, we need to recognize again that it's a source of complete protein. And the fat content will vary. Uh, the fat is located in the skin and just under the skin. And so if you are looking to have a, a lower fat piece of poultry, don't eat the skin. That's going to help quite a bit. The dark meat contains more connective tissue and thus a little higher fat content. Cholesterol is also present in poultry in the, about the same amount as found in other meats. Poultry is also a good source of the B vitamins as well as iron. Myoglobin, remember, is the protein that provides the color. So the dark color of the dark meat is due to an increased amount of myoglobin. Our final category of meat products are fish. There's two major categories to classify fish. First, we have the fin fish and then the shellfish. Fin fish are those that have scales and can be further divided into flat and round fish. The flat fish, such as flounder and halibut, swim like a wave and have eyes on one side of their head. Round fish swim straight and have eyes on both sides of their head. Shellfish are further divided into two subcategories as well. We have the mollusk and the crustaceans. The mollusks have a soft structure and are either partially or entirely enclosed in a hard shell. Examples of mollusks include clams, oysters, mollusks, scallops, squid. Crustaceans are those that are covered with a crust-like shell and have segmented bodies. So that would be your shrimp, lobster, crawfish, crab. As with meat and poultry, fish is another high quality complete protein source. Fish is a very good source of the omega-3 fatty acids, especially the fatty fish such as salmon and mackerel. The omega-3 fatty acids um, are a polyunsaturated fatty acid that has been linked with reducing the risk of heart disease. Uh, there is still a minimal amount of carbohydrate in fish and shellfish, with fish being good, a good source of zinc, iron, copper, and calcium especially calcium for those meats that um, have the bone intact, such as canned salmon or canned mackerel in which you will eat the bone. Fatty fish such as salmon 
also was a good source of vitamin A.